Welcome ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys so much for watching, my name is Josh, and today we're going to talk about how you can identify your vintage lead denim garments. Let's get into it. So Lee is considered part of the big three or the holy trinity of American denim along with Levi's and Wrangler. In 1889, they started their company as a grocery company or a, like a dry goods company. And it wasn't until 1912 that they ventured into denim creating their first coveralls. In 1913, they said, hey, let's combine the uh, denim blouse or the jacket as we know it today with the overalls and produce a coverall which they called the Union Alls, which was Lee's first big product. They would continue on for about two more decades, uh, expanding their offering, and actually became the first company to put a zipper in a pair of denim jeans in 1927. They would continue on growing in popularity over the next several decades, and in 1946, uh, went through a transformation that really uh, brought us the Lee we sort of recognize today. This is when they introduced their Twitch logo, which is uh, sort of simulates the what would happen uh, when you brand a cow and how they would twitch once they felt the pain of the branding, and it would be a little bit wonky. This is also when they introduced the Lazy S Arcuate on the back of their jeans, and it's also when they introduced the Lee Riders, which are pretty much the, you know, pinnacle of the Lee product line that we know today. And the company would continue to innovate and create new product lines all the way up through the 70s where they joined the other denim companies in producing more fashion, more trendy uh, garments like bell bottoms and flares and, and western shirts, etc. And then later in 1996, uh, they introduced Lee Pipes, which if you grew up in the 90s like I did, everyone loved Lee Pipes. They were gigantic, wide, big, baggy pants. You could fit a clown car in them, and everyone wanted them. And I believe that's sort of the last time Lee was culturally relevant, uh, but that was in 1996, and the Lee Pipes is what we got. Now, Lee did a lot of things to sort of differentiate themselves in the denim market, but one of the most important things I think they did was their gelt denim. Uh, you can actually see the branding for gelt denim on a lot of stuff in the 70s, 60s, and 50s. And what it was was a lighter weight denim that actually was woven in a particular way as to give it a very soft, lightweight feel, but be as durable as a heavier ounce denim. And so that was sort of a leg up it had over their competitors because their, their garments were softer and lighter and more breathable, it felt, than some of the other competition. Now, before we get into dating these Lee garments, uh, it's important to remember we're using a 20-year definition for vintage. So items that are at least 20 years old are vintage by our standard. This is not everybody's standard, but it is sort of the predominant standard. Some people think it's 18 years. Some people don't consider uh, denim vintage until it's 50 years old. But for our case, we're gonna use 20. Now, as we get into this, I'll admit, we cannot be as specific as you can possibly be with like Levi's. Levi's, we can get down to the year and even the month in some cases. With Lee, that does not seem to be the case. There does not seem to be that clear marker or these very specific things that have been established that give us sort of year and month sort of level, you know, production specificity, but we can get it into certain eras and we can get it to the point where we can be confident it is vintage. Whether it's, you know, from 1977 or 1984, we may not know, but we can get at least approximations. So the first method we're gonna use is the Lee branding that's attached to typically the edge of a pocket, whether it's a jacket or a pair of jeans, that's typically on the edge of a pocket. And this says Lee. Now, there are a couple different elements that were present at different times. So the earliest iteration of this little brand just said Lee, just L-E-E, -E, nothing else. And that ran up until 1960. So if you have a garment with just Lee on it, nothing else, it's older than 1960. If you have a garment that has Lee and a trademark on the corner on the edge, that's from the 1960 to about 1970 range. And if you have a Lee with a trademark and an MR, that means it's older than 1970. Now it is important to realize that that trademark and MR may have uh, show up on the interior labels or some other elements, but for that particular location, it's just 
those three subsets. Now, admittedly, that's a lot of different time periods on both sides of that era, but that does give us a better idea of whether our items are particularly valuable because if they are older than 1970, that's when they start becoming a little, quite a bit more valuable than the stuff from the 70s to present day. Additionally, another method we can use is to use the union ticket or the union stamp. Lee used a lot of union labor when producing their garments, and because of that, they included a union stamp or a union ticket. A union ticket was like a piece of paper sewn in somewhere on the garment, and a union stamp was typically the stamp of that union stamped on the care tag of a particular garment. But in 1994, the United Garment Workers of America, which was the union that they often used, folded and dissolved as NAFTA sort of outsourced a lot of textile jobs to overseas. And that left them without sort of anything to do and, you, and Lee did not use their production anymore and that stamp was no longer included. Now it appears to be that the union tickets were used until about the early 80s and the stamps were used on the care tags from about the mid to early 80s onward until about 1994 again when they were discontinued. This gives us a few more boundaries to use to date our Lee denim. Now Lee also used salvage denim like the other companies did. Uh, up until about the late 40s, they used the double edge seam salvage uh, on all of their jeans, just like everybody else. But from a brief period of time from the late 40s to the uh, late 50s, it appears they used a half salvage half overlock seam and that ran for about 10 or so years uh, though there are some double selvage seamed uh, jeans in that period that if you have that half seam you can be confident it's from that 10 12 year period from the late 40s to the late 50s now it does appear that about the early 1960s uh, Lee abandoned selvage altogether uh, so that can give you a few more markers to determine the age of your jeans if they happen to be selvage. Now after 1967, the entire textile industry was required by US law to include washing instructions with the garments. And that led to people putting uh, sewing in these tags uh, with the care instructions on them. We know them as care tags. And they're on pretty much all modern day clothing these days. Uh, but that started in 1967. So if your garment has a care tag, it's pretty con you can be pretty confident that it is younger than 1967 at least. Now your care tag may have been torn out or ripped, so be careful with that. Use some other methods to help determine that, but at least gives you an idea of by the care tag. Now another common way we can use to uh, narrow down the date of production from our garments is to use the interior labels. These are not the care tags that I was just talking about, but these are the labels inside with the branding, sometimes a model number, sometimes a size. These labels have changed a lot throughout the years, sometimes subtly, sometimes significantly. We can use these and the people who've done the research to identify at least down to about a decade, maybe a little bit less than a decade, um, with these labels as our guides. Of course, I could not get to all of them, so I've included them in the description below. So click the link if you wanna get down to the nitty gritty and you can use those charts to try to get down to about a 10 year or so uh, era uh, time period of the production of your garment. Now similarly, you can use the back patch as well. The Lee back patch has gone through a variety of different uh, transitions and transformations. Uh, from the beginning, it's been leather, and at one point in the 20s and 30s was actually a hairy cowhide. So it wasn't even like refined leather, it was just like a hairy cowhide with the brand on it. Now, during those times, it was the origi more original logo uh, from Lee, not the Twitch logo that we referred to earlier. And that's another way you can identify the age of a pair of Lees, is if does it have the Twitch logo? If it has the Twitch logo, it's younger than 1946. The back patch would remain leather until I believe the mid 90s. So if you find a Lee jean that has like a PVC or a rubberized or paper uh, tag, a back patch, it's unlikely that that is vintage as most of the vintage models you will find with Lee will have a leather back patch. Now you should also pay attention to the product lines themselves, like the Lee Rider product line was produced in 1946. So if it has Lee Rider on it, it's definitely not older than 1946. 
Now, in the early 90s, uh, Lee actually sort of subdivided the Lee Rider and created just Riders by Lee. If you have a Riders by Lee, it is younger than 1993. Now, if you have Lee Riders, it's gonna be between 1946 and 1993. Other product lines include Riveted by Lee, which was a late 80s, early 90s, and into the late 90s. You also have Lee Pipes, which was produced in 1996 up through the early 2000s and was phased out. Uh, if you see an item with Lee Pipes uh, branding on it, it's most likely vintage in most cases will be vintage and because it is sort of from a subset that's discontinued also has some some you know serious desirability in some cases now again i do wish there were a way to be more specific like down to the year of production but there doesn't seem to be a way to do that as of yet if that changes i'll let you know and maybe we'll update this video down the line if we find a method that really gets us really narrowed down to the year uh, but until then i hope this was somewhat helpful if you need any further help you're welcome to send me a question at lootfam1 at gmail.com and we can work out uh, maybe you have a particular pair that you're going to look that you're looking at and you need some help and some consultation please just email me we love to answer those questions to the best of our ability anyways thank you guys so much for watching please remember to like comment subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next one peace